In Movies and Money, film critic Eric Childers is here with his reviews of the films on the way to the big screen for the holiday weekend. Hello to you, Eric. Hi, Angie. Before we get to what's coming up, Eric, it was a big weekend for Eternals, which was number one at the box office for the second straight week. How are Eternals numbers tracking with other Marvel releases? Well, Angie, while the film is certainly going to be coming in on the low side of the films within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it is really not going to be that far off from the film's release this year in what is hopefully the back half of the pandemic. In other words, still one of the highest grossing films of the year. Now, Eternals grossed another $26.8 million this past weekend, bringing its total to over $118 million. So anyone who might term the film with flop or financial disappointment is leaning towards hyperbole. The film you expect to take the top spot from Eternals is this weekend's debut of Ghostbusters Afterlife. Here's a peek. This is creepy old farmhouse our grandfather left us in the middle of nowhere. Why'd you bring me up here? Entertainment value. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Eric, you have a review for us. I do, Angie, and after 16 months of delays due to the pandemic, Ghostbusters Afterlife is finally here. And directed by Jason Reitman, son of the film's original director, Ivan Reitman, the approach to the film drew some raised eyebrows from skeptics when it appeared it would be taking a more Stranger Things approach to the material rather than the absurdist comic tone we have seen in every Ghostbusters film since the original in 1984. I was even one of those skeptics, but... I have to say that I was really won over by this film due to that very approach. The film certainly has its share of solid laughs, but in focusing this story mostly on the granddaughter of one of the original Ghostbusters, we are drawn into a good, almost old-fashioned kind of Joe Dante-esque film from the 1980s. McKenna Grace, who carries this film as that granddaughter, is simply terrific and gives us a center that earns her big hero moments. This is a generational film that does a good job on closing the book on the past, and I push back on the idea that this is nothing but a nostalgia trip, even if the climax does lean a bit heavily on what we've seen before. The concepts of nostalgia and fan service have become buzzwords for critics who have felt overloaded with franchise offerings, and if this film was as lazy as those labels, I would join in on the criticism. But the film is funny, a lot of fun, and I'm glad my skepticism was not joined by cynicism. I think people will really enjoy this film. We are heading into the Thanksgiving holiday, which, with the exception of last year, tends to be a major movie-going event. What does Hollywood have to offer, and are you spotting any blockbusters? I still think there's a giant maybe on that question, Angie, but no doubt the industry will be eyeing next week to see if the next current wave of vaccinations for children will provide more comfort in movie-going. 2.6 million kids between 5 and 11 are getting vaxxed right now is still only 10%. But after releasing both Soul and Luca to Disney+, Plus, Pixar will finally be releasing a new film as a theatrical exclusive in Encanto. Reviews for the Brazilian set animated film are solid, as one comes to expect from the studio, but the industry continues to wait for a family film to draw a worthy fraction from their usual box office numbers. Also in theaters over the holiday is Will Smith and King Richard, playing the father of Venus and Serena Williams. As the penultimate release in the Warner Brothers HBO Max strategy, I suspect most will watch the potential Oscar nominee at home rather than in theaters. And like most adult-laden films, Ridley Scott's House of Gucci with Lady Gaga, Adam Driver, Jared Leto, and Al Pacino does not feel like the film to draw them back. Thank you, Eric. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you, Angie. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.